everyone, Adrian from The Samplist, and today this is part two of a two-part video in which I am going to show you a new electric piano library from Native Instruments, Electric Keys Timed Duo. This library features two unique and amazing electric pianos, the Phoenix and the Diamond, recorded by Galaxy Instruments. In this video, we're going to focus on the Phoenix. The Phoenix is the native successor to the Diamond and arrived in the early 1970s. If you're not familiar with how electric pianos work, they produce sound by hammers striking metal tines. The Phoenix, however, has wooden hammers with a rubber lined cushion, and these tines became thinner and lighter, which created a more barking tone when played in the lower end of the keyboard. The sound is then amplified by electromagnetic pickups similar to an electric guitar. This particular electric piano sounds featured sort of heavily in a lot of pop songs of the 70s and I'm sure you will recognise the tone immediately when we get to the playthrough section of this video. You can get Electric Keys Times Duo now for £129, it includes 200 presets with 100 for each piano. You'll need Contact Player 7.8 or the full version of Contact to use it. Yes, this does work with the free player version of Contact, so you don't need to go out and splash out for the full fat version. It's also not too heavy on your hard drive as it only requires 7.2 gigabytes of disk space. So now let's listen to how the Phoenix sounds.
So that's what the Phoenix sounds like with a little whistle stop tour through some of the snapshots. Let's take a look at what we can do to shape our sound by taking a tour through the interface. If you've seen part one of this video that featured the diamond, then this next section will be very familiar to you as the interface uses exactly the same controls. In the playthrough, I used sort of different ways of getting to the presets uh, and the snapshots. One way you can actually do this now is by just where it says suitcase one, click on that, and then you can select different parameters here to whittle down your choice so you can get to the patch that, you, that you're really seeking. So if I want something that's a suitcase, uh, got a bit of bark, and uh, let's go for a vintage sound. We've got one there that says quarter pulse, so I click on that, it'll load quarter pulse. And we can do the same there where I said I want a ballad. I'll have a classic flanger. And if I want that sound, all I need to do is select the plus, uh, the tick button there, close the interface just by pressing the X, or I can do a little preview. It should give me a preview when I highlight it. If you don't want that preview to work, just select the uh, speakers button there so it's greyed out rather than dark black. And say I want that sound, just press the tick. And we're there. You do have three separate views to play with to shape your sound. You've got the main view, which is the page we're seeing now. You have the instrument view, which allows you to adjust different sonic qualities of the piano which we will get to very shortly. And then you have the effects page where you can add a lot of effects to the sound and then save your patch that you've created for, for later. Along the bottom of the screen, we have some pre-mapped, these down here, we have got pre-mapped macros that stay on every single page you go to there. Uh, and that just allows you to map controls from a MIDI controller to this particular uh, macro here. And if you click a little arrow with a dot, it will take you to the page that these relate to. Uh, so if I go to reverb, it'll bring up the reverb. If I go to color, it brings up the color. So I'll just go back to main instrument there. So let's move into the uh, main view here. We got, like I said, we've got the view of the piano here. We've got the macros running along the bottom and these allow you to change the sound very quickly. So you've got lovely sort of controls immediately to hand. And if you want to turn any of these off, just press the power button there. Maybe a little bit hard to see, but it goes from black, very dark colour to being meaning you're on and you click it and it goes a very sort of dullish colour to say it's off. So that's the, the main page. In the instrument view, we have these three different columns. Well, four, if you count the, uh, the sources on the side here, which control the balance between the pickup signal and the mic signal. So that's your pick up here, that's your mic signal here. And on the sources, you can change how the hammers sound and the pedal sound. So if I just turn the hammer to the microphone, sorry, turn the microphone on. So that all sort of changes the balance between where that hammer sounds coming from, whether the pickup, so it's the microphone. Um, if I just go back to sources again, and this controls the volume, so I can have more microphone than pickup. But as this is an electric piano, I would turn the microphone down. So you can blend the two to get a better sort of um, more into your soundscape.
Then we have the shape, shape, tone, and noise controls here, which, which they do well. They say on the tin there, really, because uh, if you say look at the color, that alters the darkness and lightness of the tone. Tonal shift. So the dynamic range, that's uh, just ha what happens when you, how hard you hit the keys. So if I play lightly, very soft, but if I turn this all the way to minus 100 and play very soft, it's straight in your face. And then you can change the attack and release. Then we've got the tone. So if I want to put a bit of bell on, Sub. I can change that that if I want to. And we have overtones. can change the resonance now we have the ability to introduce noise from the hammers and increase that or decrease it if I just turn that off The microphone picks it up better. So if I turn the hammers off and put the pedal on, and then so you can get the uh, thud of the sustain pedal. We've got a noise loop. So we can add a bit of vinyl. So it just adds a bit to that sort of um, ambience of playing uh, an electric piano. So you can sort of make it sound like it's on an old fashioned record straight away there. Then we have the effects section, which allows you to add different effects in the, in the, in the line. So if I put convolution and put IR in and then click on IR, I can change the impulse response to whatever I want to do. So we can have it on through a toy speaker if we want. 50s radio. Yesterday. And there's you can hear the hum from the amp. Which is quite cool. So you, you've got uh, different presets here that you can do. You can say cloud echoes. Soundscape. So you can have great fun here with the effects. And if you want a particular effect to play, just tick and then it'll stay. And that's basically what we have to shape your sound. So let's listen to this electric piano in the context of a composition.
So a little ambient soundscape there. For those of you that have watched the first part of this video that focuses on the diamond, you'll recognize this track because it's exactly the same track. All I have done is substituted in the sounds from the Phoenix library because what native instruments have done, they've actually named the patches exactly the same for each library. Um, and it just uses the characteristics of say the diamond or the Phoenix. So we see classic vibe here. Um, all I've done is swapped out the patch classic vibe for diamond for classic vibe for the Phoenix. Clearly Phoenix pad is the Phoenix pad on from the Phoenix library. So we started off with this filtered echoes. That adds a sort of like instant atmosphere. That something's going to happen, something's being cold. And we sort of have this going over the top of a subtle pad. We then use hot solo as a bass sound. Nice growl to this. Now that filtered echo sound we had at the beginning, I made into a bit of a, a sequence. So straight away you're getting that ambient sort of vibe from this. We then have two lead sounds, We've got a classic vibe and basic Phoenix. They both play exactly the same notes and all I've done here, as you can see, I've panned them left and right ever so slightly, giving a wider stereo, spec stereo spectrum and classic vibe sounds like this. And the basic Phoenix sounds like this. Very similar. Um, for me, the basic Phoenix has more of a bell quality to it than the classic vibe. When you mix them together, we end up with this wonderful sort of electric piano sound that I do like. floats along really nicely though that sound and then we bring in another sequence from using the patch psych echoes So there we have it, a nice ambient soundscape. I found the Phoenix to be a more reflective and typical electric piano sound than the Diamond, but that's just personal preference. Although it has a bell quality to the sound, it has a, a less ring and is more mellow. Basically it has a bit more funk to a to sort of like overall soundscape. That's mainly down to the rubber endings on the hammers hitting the thinner tines. In both these libraries, I do love the clean look of the interface, which is very self-explanatory and easy to navigate. The only very, very absolute, very tiny minor grab I have is a preset browser. It's not very clear which parameters you've selected as there's a very little color difference between being on and off. 
That aside, I thoroughly enjoy playing both of these pianos and they get a hearty recommendation from me and should be added to your buy me playlist. Being able to shape your sound with the effects and chain them in order makes it so easy to take your mellow piano into a snarling beast of a lead or an ethereal pad. This makes both libraries so flexible that they will fit in with many genres of music. Like what I did with the diamond in part one of this video, I wanted to show you how versatile the Phoenix is within a composition context. You can use it for any genre of music, not just the typical ones that you would associate electric pianos with. The onboard effects help you craft a sound that can be as closely related to an electric piano as you want, or an absolute polar opposite to the extreme. I hope you enjoy this video and learn something new. I want to thank Native Instruments for sending across Electric Keys Times Duo for a review. It's a fantastic library that I do highly recommend. If you want to hear what the diamond sounds like, you can catch that in part one of this video series. And if you want to see more reviews, please subscribe to the channel and visit thesamplist.com. Thanks for watching.